Hi guys, uh, welcome to Single Track 101. Uh, I had a um, a viewer named Alan. Uh, he's a younger guy. He's uh, 15 years old, and he's wanting to get into mountain biking. And uh, of course, he wanted a full suspension first, but you know he's got to start out in a hardtail. And he asked me what bikes he should look at in the $800 price range. Um, so what I've done, I, I I did some looking around and. I'm kind of frustrated by my search, um, but I did find a couple of bikes that um, I, I think are worth looking at. Um, and again, I haven't ridden any of these bikes. I'm going off of spec. I'm going off of reputation. Um, so these are bikes to look at. I'm not necessarily saying go out and buy these bikes. Um, <clears throat> but the first one I wanted to look at uh, is this Raleigh. Uh, it's a Tokul 3. And this one, I believe, is a little bit over. I think it's in the $1,000 price range. I think you might be able to get them a little bit cheaper. But um, this one I wanted to point at because uh, I like it. It's got a 120 millimeter travel up front, and it's got an air fork. Now, finding a bike in the $800 price range with an air fork, um, at least for me, has been impossible. I haven't been able to find it. Uh, and it's kind of frustrating. So um, this is the only bike that I'm recommending here that's actually got a RockShox air fork. Um, and for me, I, I haven't ridden a coil spring fork that I've been wild about yet. So uh, this was one I thought was pretty good. And uh, it's also got some other features I think are pretty cool. If you go down here, uh, it's got the Shimano Diore uh, Shadow a derailleur, and it's a 10-speed. And 10-speed drivetrain is real good. Um, so, you know, this particular bike seemed really good, and, um, you know, the other thing, too, is it's got uh, hydraulic brakes and stuff like that. Uh, these are, you know, you, you'd really want to get hydraulic brakes if possible. Um, but uh, this one just seemed like a good one to look at. Um, the next one is uh, the Diamondback Hook. Now, this one has a mechanical fork. Um, again, not something I'm super stoked about. Uh, but again, it's got 120 millimeter uh, travel up front, so uh, I, I kind of like that. Um, this particular bike it has uh, a one by eight, I believe. Let, let's take a look here. Um, yeah, it's an eight-speed drivetrain. So, and it's just a one by eight. So it's an eight-speed bike, a um, little bit different. And the other thing I'm not super wild about is, you know, it's got mechanical disc brakes instead of hydraulic. Um, the other bike they have in this range is called the uh, uh, the Line, and uh, if we go back and take a look at this real quick, um, the Line is a little bit more. Uh, it's, it's MSRP at a thousand. Um, again, you know, coil sprung fork. Um, not super excited about that, but uh, it's got hydraulic brakes, so it might be worth the step up there. And again, the reason I'm pointing out these bikes is, you know, to get a starter on a decent bike that is um, good enough to get you going until you can get a full suspension. Um, that's the goal. Now, if your goal is just to go for a particular, just stay with a hardtail, um, the advice might be a little bit different. But this is, you know, mainly to get out on the trail. So that's the hook. Now, um, the last one, you know, as you guys know, I'm a big giant fan. Um, is the, this is the Talon, and uh, here's here are my thoughts on this. He's you know he's looking for a bike under 800 bucks, and which is kind of difficult, but you know there, these are some options, and um, and the Talon does come with an air fork, but that starts that's 1300 bucks, um, so it's a little beyond the price range. But here's the thing about these two, the, the three and the four, um, they both have a Shimano drivetrain. And they both have hydraulic discs. Um, you know, the cheaper one's an eight-speed. The more expensive one's a, a nine-speed. Um, it's got a, you know the full uh, um, you know three-ring crank set up front, so you got plenty of gears. Um, you know, and and from what I understand, uh, all giant wheels are uh, ready to go tubeless. I'm not sure about the other two brands, but the reason I'm pointing to these is that if um, if he were trying to keep it in that price range, um, you know, the one thing I would think to do is to get one of these, whichever one you, you thought was better um, or made more sense, given the scenario I'm going to describe. Um, I would get one of these with the intention of getting either a 100 or 120 millimeter air fork 
uh, for the front of this bike. So uh, that's going to be about 300 bucks or so. So 585 plus 300, it's a little bit over. Um, but you'd have a really capable bike at that point. Um, you know, the air fork uh, would make this bike run really nicely. Um, you know, obviously, you know, it's better to have more money and better to have more budget. But um, if I only had $800, maybe nine, I would probably get one of these two bikes and just add the air fork to it. Um, of course, that's the other reason I was talking about the, the Tokul 3. Tokul 2 does not have an air fork, it's mechanical. Um, but the three has an air fork. Uh, pretty cool. I, I'm not. I'm not too sure how I feel about the single uh, crank up front, but you know, um, some people that may just be fantastic. Uh, you know, the front derailleur uh, can be a pain sometimes when you drop a chain. So, um, but you know, these are the three I thought of. Um, I'll put some links down below, and um, you know, if if you do end up getting like you know the the giant and the Raleigh, you know. Those are those are dealership bikes only. Um, but with the Diamondback, uh, I'm going to put a link. Uh, I'm, I'm an Amazon associate, so uh, if you do end up getting it, um, yeah, I'd appreciate you going through my link. Uh, just go through the link same day, and you order the bike. I can get a, a small commission on it, so that's kind of cool. Um, but you know that, that was, wasn't really my um, purpose of doing this. Um, it's just one of those things. If you're going to get it, right on. I appreciate it, but. Um, for me, I would probably go the route of uh, either the Talon or the Raleigh, um, you know, just because of the air fork or having the air fork option of being able to buy the bike and then add the air fork later. Um, you know, or, you know, if you just want to go with the cheaper one and not too worried about the air fork, one of these would be fine. Um, but for me, you know, air forks are just so much nicer in my opinion. Um, but anyway, that's just my thoughts on, on a hardtail. I'm not in the market. haven't been in the market. I'm, I'm a full suspension guy. I really like the full suspension. Um, but, you know, these are these are good little uh, bikes. And these are also 27.5. Um, all three of these, these are the ones he asked about. Um, personally, I would, I would get a 29er hardtail. Um, you know, that's just me having my riding style and my preferences, I really prefer the 29er. Um, but for someone who's young, wants to kick it around and, and uh, stuff like that, 27.5 is great. Um, but anyway, those are my thoughts on this. Um, I'm curious what you guys think. I'm curious if anyone's watching this who's had these bikes, um, what they think about them. Are, you know, are they, am I giving a good recommendation here or let me know, you know. Um, I, I, like I said, I haven't ridden a single one of these, but uh, I do like the specs on them. Um, they they seem to spec out real good. And when it comes to a hardtail, uh, you know, it, it's a little harder to mess up. <laughs> Full suspension is a lot easier to for a manufacturer to mess up because of uh, you know the dynamics of having that rear suspension involved. And the fact is, all of these bikes you can change the front suspension no problem. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and uh, please subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks.